Hey there, welcome back to the Stay at Home Detectives podcast. Today we're covering the case of Madalena Kojikari. So let's dive right in. Madalena Kojikari is an 11 year old girl from Cornelius, North Carolina. Her 35 year old mother, Diana Kojikari, had brought Madalena to the U.S. in 2017 from Moldova, leaving her relatives and Madalena's biological father behind. Diana, who was looking for a new life and a new husband through an international dating website, then met 60-year-old Christopher Palmiter, a mechanical designer from North Carolina, and they were married soon after meeting in 2017. What some believed to be a mail-order bride situation, Christopher had offered Diana the world, U.S. citizenship, and a large sum of money to marry him and move to the U.S., Others believe that Diana was just so desperate to have a bright financial future for not only herself but her daughter that she decided to rush into marriage with Christopher and start their new life in a beautiful half-million-dollar home that Christopher purchased for his new wife and stepdaughter that was in Lake Norman, North Carolina. Madalena was a very shy and guarded 11-year-old who didn't have many friends. She was last seen on November 21, 2022, getting off the school bus at 4.59 p.m. Diana claims that the last time she saw her daughter was about 10 p.m. on November 23rd. She told police Madalena went to her room that night to go to bed. Diana stated that she and her husband, Christopher, argued that night, and the next day he drove to his family's home in Michigan to recover some items. She said she went to check on her daughter at approximately 11.30 a.m. on November 24th the next day, but the girl was not in her room, and she noticed her backpack and some clothes missing. According to police, Diana told them that she waited until Christopher Palmiter returned home at about 7 p.m. on November 26th to ask if he knew where Madalena was. Diana failed to report her daughter missing until mid-December. When police asked Diana why she waited to report Madalena missing, she stated she was worried it might start a conflict between her and Christopher. Palmiter told police that he asked Diana where Madalena was when he returned home from his trip. According to court documents that emerged last week, Diana told police she believed her husband had put her family in danger. Officials at Madalena School had made repeated attempts to contact her family to ask about her absences, but it was not until December 15th that Diana went to the school to report her daughter missing. Diana and Christopher were then arrested on December 17th and were charged with failure to report a missing child to law enforcement. North Carolina law states that parents are required to report the disappearance of a child within 24 hours. Diana has also been charged with hindering a federal investigation. Diana and Christopher were appointed public defenders, and Diana's bond has been set at $250,000 and Christopher's at $200,000. If Diana makes bail, she will be required to electrical monitoring or house arrest. Diana and Christopher have given no reasons for Madalena's disappearance or any indication of where she might be. The Cornelius County Police Department, the North Carolina Bureau of Investigations, and the FBI have all joined forces to investigate Madalena's disappearance. On Monday, December 19th, an extensive search was done on Lake Norman. Police also visited her home with canine units to search the premises. Court documents stated that while police were searching the home, a large piece of plywood was found blocking the kitchen. When detectives asked about it, Christopher stated that they had plans on making a separate apartment, although no evidence or active permit was found to corroborate that statement. The community has come together to hold vigils for Madalena and are desperate for answers to what happened to this sweet little girl. Okay, guys, so we want to chat a little bit more in depth about this investigation and talk about some of the theories and inconsistencies in the story. We'll be closely following this case, so we do plan on providing any additional updates that we find or that come to light in the coming weeks. Um, So obviously, the things that we're chatting about are just theories. They're just inconsistencies um, that we're finding and that most people are finding within the story. First thing I want to chat about is just about Diana and Christopher's initial statements. So one thing that really stood out to both Sam and I when we were covering this case and doing our research is that Diana and Christopher, when they were giving their statements to the police, had initially said that... Diana one said that she had asked Christopher when he returned home from his family's home in Michigan that she asked if he had hid Madalena 
And Christopher came back and said the same and had asked Diana if she had hit Madalena. It's so weird to me. It is. It's very weird. It's very strange. Um, it also makes you kind of think, okay, with Diana's statement, she mentioned as well that she felt that Christopher had put their family in danger, but she didn't elaborate on that on that statement so how would he have put the family in danger so that that can mean a variety of things if we delve into that specifically we can say okay did christopher get wrapped up in something maybe drugs or something illegal or even trafficking or trafficking right i know that's been a big theory behind this as well a lot of people are speculating that maybe madalena was sold and that christopher had something to do with it but that wouldn't make sense either because financially they were great right they lived in a half a million dollar home. You know, Christopher made a good living. So uh, yeah, I, I kind of doubt that theory. You know, I mean, anything's possible, but I, I have my doubts with that theory because of that. Maybe he didn't have as much money as he said he did. That's possible. It could have been a trafficking thing. That's possible. Yeah. Another weird thing is why did he go to Michigan to just recover some items? Yet he claims that he didn't see Madalena for an entire week leading up to when he returned home, but there was video evidence of her on November 21st getting off the school bus, so that's another inconsistency. Yeah, that's not, I don't understand that either. How would you not see your stepdaughter for a week prior to that when you live in the same home? Because there's no there was no statement, there was no evidence showing that he wasn't home prior to that. It was just him leaving to the family's home in Michigan. Um, in Michigan, So, yeah, that is another inconsistency. But I think another interesting mention is Diana's spiritual beliefs. And she believed in Kundalini and a lot of different um, enlightenment practices. And something that she had mentioned, I know that was found on her social media accounts, was video of her talking about wanting to experience that enlightenment and in order to get to that point you needed to experience something very traumatic there had to be some type of really traumatic event in order to get to that spiritual awakening that they call it or whatever Um, so I think that's it's something important that we should probably keep in the back of our minds because it's also a possibility that Diana had something to do with her daughter's disappearance and maybe maybe that has something to do with it. Again, there's a lot of speculation here and there's a lot of theories, but... Kind of gives me the Lori Vallow vibes for any of you who have followed that case, which they actually go to trial next year, but it definitely gives me those type of vibes. Like, they think that they did nothing wrong and... Yeah. Now, who really knows? Who knows what happened to Madalena? I pray that, you know, they find her safe Yes, absolutely. We don't know in this case, like, did Diana do something to Madalena when Chris was going to Michigan? Did Chris go to Michigan and have Madalena as a passenger and need to dispose of her body? Another weird thing is when investigators had went into the house, there was a piece of plywood that was covering the kitchen and they claimed that they were remodeling to build an apartment which also doesn't really make any sense because when investigators dove into that, they didn't find any building permits, anything along those lines. So that was kind of weird as well. Yeah, there was no evidence at all that that was actually true. So, And then it's just the location. If you're going to build an apartment, why would you build it off of the kitchen? Especially when you have a half a million dollar house that has a swimming pool and... Right. And you know what? I haven't seen as we were doing our research or any any of the police reports indicating that there was a search in the kitchen behind the plywood it was just shown i mean i'm sh- i'm assuming they did search it yeah, because they, they were had, taking stuff out of the house yeah because they had a warrant obviously um and they had the canine unit and everything there so i'm assuming they searched it and didn't find anything but maybe they did and they're just not releasing any of that information but it's it's also just interesting I just think that statement's interesting. The entire case is interesting. I'm very curious to see how everything's going to kind of pan out. I mean, there's new updates daily. Investigators are talking to both of them. They're trying to piece together everything. They don't want the public to 
start looking for Madalena yet until they are able to look at all possible crime scenes. But when you go that long without reporting your child missing, I mean, the school was even calling daily to ask why Madalena was absent. Yeah, they were. And they actually served Diana with truancy paperwork. And when the school came to the home to serve her with the paperwork, Diana did make a statement to school officials that she would attend the truancy meeting that they had scheduled and that Madalena would be present with her. But of course, that day came and Madalena was not with her. And so, of course, that made school officials even more concerned. And that's when Diana finally told the school that Madalena had actually been missing, didn't attend that truancy meeting. How much more time would have gone on before she actually contacted police to say that her daughter was missing. And that's another thing that it's a red flag to me that Diana either knew or was involved in her daughter's disappearance. And her calling her family in Moldova to let them know that she had been missing and asking them what to do. And they obviously told her to call authorities, which she should have done. The whole case, nothing adds up. It's a very weird case. It's definitely different from other true crime cases that we've both followed. And it does give a little bit of Casey Anthony vibes like that case from years ago Mm -hmm. where Casey didn't report her daughter missing for what was it six weeks. This is very similar. You just it's not something common when a child goes missing if the parents are actually not involved for them to go for extended periods of time without contacting authorities to say, hey, my child is missing. I couldn't go five seconds without knowing where my child is. No, I would have a hard time even waiting. I I wouldn't even be able to wait the first 24 hours. I'd be out looking for my child within the the first couple of minutes. Um, So it's just really hard to believe that both Diana and Christopher had nothing to do with it just based on the facts of of the case right now. Well, another thing is Madalena didn't have a lot of friends. They had said that she constantly wore a jacket now, whether that being obviously an 11-year-old who's going through puberty and, you know, a little self-conscious, or if there was any abuse going on in the house, which, again, it sounds like none of them really had friends or family. I mean, Madalena's family was all in Moldova. Yeah. I mean, she didn't really know much about Christopher either. Like, And his family was in Michigan from, yeah. you know, what we know. So, yeah, they definitely seem to be very reserved, very quiet, kept to themselves type family. And so that but, makes it a little, that makes it more difficult because it's hard to say what was the family dynamic really like. And then even when, Di- it, I know that it was mentioned when Diana was arrested that she did have some markings bruising on her face. So then there was questions around whether there was abuse in the home from Christopher to Diana and potentially to Madalena. I mean, another, th- these are all theories, guys. Um, right. We're just giving our opinions, potential theories, uh, just ba- based on some of the facts of the case and what we're, we're, the conclusions we're kind of coming to based on that, so. They could have gotten to a fight about what happened to Madalena. I mean, it could have been Diana that started a fight. You know, no, nobody really knows what was going inside, you know, the house. Right. And that's the other thing that I question as well. It's like, why would you be afraid to question Christopher? You, Diana made, a, made that comment that she was afraid it was going to create conflict by asking where her daughter was. That just seems odd to me. Why would you be afraid to ask your husband where your daughter is because you you think it's going to bring up conflict? I mean, and she clearly, if let's just say Diana is innocent and maybe she doesn't know anything and it is Christopher, I mean, there had to have been some type of abuse going on if she was that terrified to ask him where her daughter was and just to allow her to continue to go missing until he came home and she mentioned something to him. I don't it just, there's just so many things that just are so off about this case. I know police and investigators are probably looking at surveillance, you know, footage of him supposedly going to Michigan. Right, because we, do we actually have evidence that he was? I mean, do we have statements from his family that state that he was actually there we don't they there's didn't nothing make any comments no. there's nothing at least now there's nothing in the media or that's been released from the police that state that there are actual family testimony that state that he was there so 
who knows? Maybe he wasn't in Michigan. Maybe he was disposing of Madalena somewhere. Or you just, we don't know. They both could have been. It's not like yeah, it's possible. anybody really knew what happened. I mean, and guys, you know, we want to know what you think about the case. What are your theories? I mean, yeah, we've kind of told you ours and we'll continue to update when we find out updates um, on what's really going on with Madalena and praying that, you know, they find her safe and sound. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, as Sam said, we will definitely continue to cover this case and continue to provide updates as we hear them. Just make sure you're following us on social, on Instagram. We're at SAH Detectives Podcast. That's our handle. So make sure you follow us. We're also on Facebook at Stay at Home Detectives Podcast. So we will try to provide as many updates as we can via social. But thank you all for joining us today and we'll catch you next time. Bye guys. Bye. Madalena Kojikari is an 11-year-old female with brown hair and brown eyes weighing approximately 90 pounds. She was last seen wearing jeans, pink, purple, and white Adidas shoes, and a white t-shirt and jacket. Anyone with any information on the whereabouts of Madalena is asked to contact the Cornelius Police Department at 704-892-7773.